Hey there everyone and welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is the Horn Rapids Hair Scramble. This is the first race of the NMA series up here in Washington. It's a hair scramble series. There's about 10 races in the series. I've been practicing in the off season trying to get better at riding and my goal for this season was to not be the last place finisher. Um, this was the first race. I felt like I had good practice in. I was actually hoping to compete. Uh, so I was pretty calm here on the line. The, line, uh, the rows before us took off and I was actually thinking, I'm gonna try for a hole shot here. Um, obviously I'm not gonna get out in front, but I wanted to compete. And I don't know exactly what went wrong there. I kind of think maybe I was spinning the rear tire in the sand. Uh, I'm not real sure. Whatever happened, I didn't get off the line. I ended up doing about 40 miles an hour down the straightaway. I watched the race leader or the group leader and he was doing about 60. So I'm well off the pace, but uh, I'm pretty happy with um, how I started the race. I'd never ridden in sand before, and this particular race has a motocross track at the end. I had never ridden a motocross track, so this is all a lot new for me. Now about here, I think I was kind of starting to go slow, but I, was th I kept telling myself in my head, go faster, go faster, twist the throttle, go race speed. I practiced that in the off season, being comfortable at race speed for me at least, and I could see these people in front of me and I kept thinking, just pass them, get in front of these guys. So um, I was trying to pass this guy in the uh, gray sweater or whatever. <clears throat> Here comes the leaders from the group behind us. Unfortunately, the camera was pointed a little too far down. I really have to get the camera mounted on top of my helmet. I'm really trying to pass this guy in the gray. Interestingly, we finished right next to each other. Across the finish line, I was just in front of him. This is only the first full lap, so I'll go ahead and mention that I finished 15th out of 18. Here we go, I'm getting a pass. Um, which was exactly what I wanted. I wanted to not be the last place finisher, and I achieved that, so I'm pretty happy about that. Even though this race is just a, a handful, um, the sand was so tiring. And I kept falling down because it would eat the front tire, and you gotta constantly be working to balance the bike because it's moving left and right under you under the loose sand. There, the whoops were so big. I'm not used to whoops this big. So that was tiring. All right, so triple seven here. I'm telling myself, just pass the guy. Just go a little faster. Maybe not that fast. <laughs> All right, getting another pass. Checking them off here. Oh nope, you got the you got the pass back. I actually came home and googled how to ride whoops because the whoops in this race were just unbelievable and. I could have used a lot more experience with some big whoops like this and some sand. We just don't have these where I was practicing, so I'm way out of my element. there. There were so many people falling down. You, you, 
wouldn't believe that a lot of these people have been riding for years. It's just the sand is so hard to ride in. Myself included, I was falling down. I think I, I fell down probably eight to ten times. Dodged a little pile up there. And when the blue guy, the guy in blue passed me, I was telling myself, well, well you can catch him. This is, this is pretty smooth. Just get on the throttle. I kept telling myself, go faster, go faster. Don't get passed. Nice. Nice jump by the green bike. I know it looks like I'm going slow, but I was, I was really trying to push myself here. Like, like I said, I practice what race speed means to me uh, all winter, and I really was working on getting faster and pushing myself to my limit. And I was trying to do that here, especially on the first lap when my, you know, my cardio was fresh and my muscles were fresh. You can see the front handlebars, how much they're moving in these turns. There's a, a little one. Nice save though. So they have these big jumps here. And I kept hitting the brakes at the top. We did a practice lap where we went on the motocross track. Oh, almost lost it there. Nice recovery though, I think. So we did a practice lap on the motocross track and I didn't know how how easy it is to jump a dirt bike. So the very first time I went up one of these motocross hills, I was probably doing like 15, maybe 20 miles an hour, and the bike just launched into the air. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it. It was, a, it was a practice lap. There were probably 100 riders around me, and I thought I was gonna crash right there on the practice lap, but uh, my chest guard hit the handlebar, because like I said, I wasn't expecting to jump. And I wobbled a lot, but I didn't fall down. But I was cautious after that because I wasn't, I wasn't trying to come here and soar through the air like motocross bikes. <clears throat> so I think what happened here is I, I hit the shifter into neutral. Just frustrating. I got to get used to these. Even riding practice all winter, I'm not used to shifting the gears with these big motorcycle boots. get you. So because the sand was eating my front tire in the turns, I started going way out wide. I was thinking maybe if I changed the turn radius and made it less tight, I'd have more success. I wish I'd kept doing that. It's probably a good strategy for a faster rider, but because I'm so slow, the extra length really eats into my time. People were passing me on the inside and I ended up taking the inside line after a while. You can see someone passed me on the inside there. Yep, nice little bit of a jump. Wasn't expecting it. <clears throat> Another person passed me on the inside. And there's my first off. You just get into the sand, it eats your first front tire, and you fall down. Now at this stage, my legs were fresh, my cardio was good. Every time I fell, I was you know in a rush. Get back up, get on the bike, let's go, let's go. After, after five or six falls, and after riding for an hour, and you're tired. Yep, there's another one. I just can't figure this mess out, the sand. But after so many times picking up the bike, falling off, going over the whoops, you get so tired. I had to fix my handguard here, which became a theme uh, 
couple of times I fell down on the right and my handguard pinned the throttle open. So I'm going to swap out these um, end mount hand guards for the kind that just float. At, at this point I was pretty tired. I know it's only been 10 minutes, but I felt like I was going pretty hard and I'd fallen twice. So um, I took this, this straightaway here. I took it as an opportunity to kind of catch my breath. I knew I couldn't rest for long. I knew people were passing me, but I just needed to catch my breath for a second. I think it was like lap two or three. I was going over some whoops. I was pretty tired and uh, I was going pretty slow. And one of the double A riders passed me at an incredible speed, hopping over the top of the whoops. And he roosted a rock that had like ninja accuracy right between my um, goggles and my mouth guard from the helmet. And I got this welt right now. From that rock it really I thought maybe I, I was bleeding down the side of my face but it just ended up being a bad welt. Definitely the worst roost, that I, roost I've had so far. Oh, oh. god damn it! Fuck. <laughs> you can hear the frustration there. I'm so mad because I'm thinking in my head Man, I practiced all winter to be fast, and the sand is killing me. I keep falling down like a buffoon. I wasn't thinking that the other riders are, are having just as hard a time as I am, the other newer riders. fourth or fifth, uh, we'll just call them laydowns, uh, it started to get in my head where I'd come up to a turn and almost crash myself just trying to avoid crashing. here hitting these whoops where I was thrown onto my back over into the grass on the right. I thought I had a good line where it was smooth and it wasn't as smooth as I thought so I hit those whoops with more speed than I was expecting and twisted the front tire and was thrown off the bike. I'm, I'm really impressed with this armor that I wear on the chest and back because when I landed on my back no, no harm, no foul. Just get up and get back on the bike. Now, about here, I saw some riders up ahead. They were going pretty slow, and I thought, you know, I'm feeling pretty good about this track right now. Maybe I can get some speed and pass these guys. So I started pushing a little bit to get in front of some people.
they had told us no passing on the asphalt, so even though I was more than happy to rip past this guy, uh, I wasn't allowed to at this particular moment. But coming up here, we get into some some flat dirt stuff, and I figured, oh yeah, I'll get past this guy, maybe a couple more. Here's a gray sweater guy again. Apparently he fell as much as I did, which was the theme. He and I went back and forth. I think uh, <laughs> he must have fallen just as much as I did in the whole race, because like I said, at the very end, after three laps, I finished just feet in front of him. You can hear me kind of speeding up. I know I want to get past this guy. I'm trying. for him. Oh, we got this turn though. Don't crash it. <laughs> Some of the double A riders were running a paddle tire in this stuff. All right, see someone else ahead. And I'm just going to push and try to get by him. I think if I hadn't fallen, I'd probably have finished much higher, you know. I finished, like I said, 15th out of 18th. With no falls, maybe I would have been, you know, maybe 10th to 12th, who knows. Our next race is in Eddyville, which is in South Washington. and. It's not as sandy as this. It's still really open fields and more dirt. Uh, but I think I think I'll probably do much better there because where I practice is like dirt and gravel, not not sand. Moving now, 40 miles an hour. Look at that, speed demon. <laughs> now this section had some huge whoops. Like I said, when I came home, I, I had to Google how to ride whoops, and it's something I gotta practice, because this has been a reoccurring theme. I didn't think about it when I was practicing this off season, but riding big whoops like this is just bread and butter for hair scrambles. You gotta be good at it. Uh, I think I get the gist, you know, hit it with enough speed to bounce to the next one, kind of pull up on the tire as you need to, on the front tire, uh, and try to pick a good line. But there's really, other than hitting it with some speed, there's not a really good secret to riding whoops. You just gotta get used to it and practice it. And of course, I'm looking at those riders up there and thinking, and I, I should be able to pass these guys. I just need to pick up the pace a little bit.
really trying to chase this guy. I remember chasing this guy uh, in the black for a while. Um, I didn't realize at the time that what he's wearing on his back is armor. I thought he was wearing a shamrock shirt for the longest time. And then I remember uh, sometime down this lap, maybe in lap two, I saw two people. I was like, oh, that's weird. Two people wearing shamrock shirts. <laughs> and then when one got close to me, I was thinking, oh, that's not a shamrock shirt. That's some kind of weird shaped armor. I can't remember if I would ever get by this guy, but I, I remember chasing him for a while. so much fun. I, I know I'm getting frustrated sometimes in the race, but it's it's some of the most fun. Between dirt bike racing and track days, it's honestly a hard decision. For the longest time, my love's been track days, but I can tell this is going to be so much more fun as I get better at it. Honestly, I had to choose, like, tomorrow. I can only do one of these for the rest of my life. And I could do it physically. I'd probably, honestly, choose dirt bike racing. Um, it's so much cheaper than a track day. It was only $60 to do this race. And, like, a gallon of fuel. It's, it's crazy how cheap this is for how much fun it is. And it's so cool to be out here with Geez, there were probably like two, three hundred riders who are all racing for the top spot. It's, it's an incredible experience. I love these hair scramble races. they're probably uh, the double-A riders coming around for lap two. I think we're probably uh, two-thirds of the way through the lap and they're already uh, putting me a lap down. That's just how fast they are. It's, it's awesome. One day. Who knows? <laughs> right now I just got to figure out how to how to do whoops and sand. All right, riders ahead, let's get the pass. So one thing I've noticed, um, I got this Honda CRF 250F, and it's a trail bike. Uh, it was sold and advertised as a trails bike, 
And one of the main reasons I bought it was I thought hair scrambles are like trails, you know, trail riding. It's just a trail ride race. Uh, and also the maintenance schedule is so much longer than like a motocross bike. I think motocross maintenance is measured in hours and this is like measured in miles because it's an on-road bike as well. But even now, learning to ride, I'm starting to figure out how soft the suspension is and the limitations of the bike. So I'm planning to move up to probably a 250 RX, I'm thinking, in the next, uh, probably for next season. I'll probably keep riding this one for this season, but I think an RX is the way to go for next season. I'm also a big rider. I'm 6'1 and almost 250. So I think this bike might be a, a little undersized for me, not engine-wise, but suspension-wise. <coughs> So here comes the biggest jump of the whole race. Holy shit, there it is. They had cameras. You go soaring off into the air and leave your mark on the motocross world, but I just rolled over the top. But of course, right in front of all the spectators and cameras, I had to lay the bike down. And Spoiler alert, I laid it down right there on every single lap. I could not figure out that turn. And the, the third lap I came through there, it was so in my head. How am I not gonna crash in front of these people? And yet, I ended up laying it down. <laughs> it was so frustrating by the end of the day how many times I laid the bike down. But this sand is just... I was so mad at the sand by the end of the race. It's such a, a tough soil type to ride in for a new rider, I think. But at least you're not hitting rocks and stuff when you fall. It's actually not a big deal to fall down. You just are going to fall down a lot. See, I went to the outside of the curve there uh, because the sand's just getting in my head. I keep falling, it keeps twisting the front tire, and I keep thinking how, you know, I'm trying things to not fall down. Maybe I don't get in the groove, maybe I try the, the sand on the outside. I'm trying stuff, but nothing seems to be working, and I, it's just inexperience. There was a, an older gentleman who was riding with me and he was parked next to me in the parking lot and I asked him like, hey man, have you got any tips or tricks for riding in sand? And he goes, well, you gotta ride in sand like you're riding in snow. And I was thinking, well, I've never ridden in snow either. <laughs> so. So here we're entering the motocross track. Get a little roost from that guy. You know, just tickle your goggles to let, it, let you know he's there. So on the last lap, when me and the gray shirt guy were entering the motocross track was when we noticed each other. And both of us had figured out at that point how to not jump our bikes over these big jumps. So the entire way through the motocross track, we were screaming on the throttle, at least for us, 
and then slamming on the brakes at the top of the hills the whole way through the motocross track. It must have looked silly to see these two guys just all out slam on the brakes, all out slam on the brakes. I was a little confused right here because you go onto the motocross track and then you come back out but then you go back on and that's where we started the race so I didn't know okay well are we on the motocross track or not and how do we get back on there <laughs> missed the turn because I was worried about that big ditch and falling down again but here we go full motocross track here A little, little tiny bit of air there. I'd love to come back out here and practice some more on this track and in the sand. It's way out in eastern Washington though, so it's about um, it's about four hours, five, five hours from my house. Maybe on a long weekend I'll go go check it out again if there's no other motorcycle races or something. There's one um, jump coming up here where on the back side there's a divot and it got me every single time. I go over the top of the jump. I wouldn't jump. I'd just go over the top, but on the back side the the front shocks would compress and slam me into the handlebars. I'm sure you'll be able to see it. I think it's the next couple of jumps somewhere. And you can see on the map on the right how you go down the long straightaway next to the motocross track. Uh, one time I almost crashed right there because I was watching the double-A guys just flying through the air. And I was like, man, that's awesome. And I almost crashed my bike on that straightaway. <laughs> I think this is the one with the divot. No, that's not it. They all look the same to me. Just a bunch of jumps. I remember it's toward the end of the track though. There's a good one. And this is it. I wonder what these numbers mean. Does that mean that's the 20 second jump in the in the track? I don't know. I'd be curious to find out. I was struggling with the gears here. For some reason it got in my head that up was down and down was up. And I kept kicking it into a lower gear. Just new rider things, right? Wasn't exactly sure where to go here. But uh, come up here, you get your tag, and that's the end of lap one. I ended up doing three laps, and like I said, finished 15th out of 18th, so I feel like I'm doing good. Uh, next race is in two weeks, and um, I'll definitely post a video, hopefully of one with the camera higher up. So thanks for watching.